First of all, good evening everybody and thank you for being here, I think. So this film was done over a period of time. Uh, you know, probably we started shooting 2009, 10 and then again in, uh, and it was completed in, uh, in 2011. There's a singer called Mura Lala, which some of you are familiar with, who sang Kabir and he sang uh, Bitai. And that's where we kind of first uh, realized about the work of Bitai. And then we met uh, uh, Haji and uh, the and Usman and Mustafa. Then they kind of we re we thought that we would kind of continue with this work and work on Bitai, which we thought was uh, very very profound. I mean, there's a lot of work done on you know Shamdam has done a lot of work on uh, Kabir, and so we thought we just this is our drop in the bucket on you know in in, term, in terms of working on uh, uh, Bitai. When there is a change and transition, we are seeing now in the way people perceive the historical figures. Um, so we have a set of uh, Bollywood which is more focused on Bulesha and as a result, the narratives of Sultan Bahu or, or Hasim Shah, or these are just somewhere hidden. How do you like, how, how, so there is one aspect of mainstreaming it and how does it go? This, this whole thing of, you know, preserving the tradition, I, I guess it gets reinterpreted in various ways and in various spaces and and one needs to be open to that in some ways. I mean, whether I, I don't see anything wrong with uh, Shah Latif being played in a pub, as if, if, if one can, uh, you know, uh, kind of relate to the essence of what he's saying. So I, I guess the world is changing and one, one cannot just bemoan its, uh, you know, passing, but one has to see how one relates to the changes. The bemoaning of the loss is true, it's happening in rural areas too, but I think it's felt more acutely in urban settings because we are disconnected from these traditions in deep ways. Uh, so even when we say something like Kabir became popular because of the Kabir project, I would say that with caution. Kabir is very robust and thriving without any help from the Kabir project, actually. So it, it became popular for people like us who are actually quite disconnected from these uh, literature traditions and oral traditions. So for us, it's a great find and a discovery, but in a lot of traditions, uh, there is no danger of them disappearing. Uh, so that's just a small point I wanted to make. In the case of Shah Latif, also there is a very robust oral tradition of Shah Latif, both in Pakistan and India, some of the singing forms are declining, that is true. So the kind of relationship with that text and its importance in their lives was something that we found very humbling and touching. Uh, and also the, you know, the, the bemoaning of this loss of tradition is, as, as puts it, you know, we always have this onus of taking these traditions forward, it, you know, we put them, the onus on these communities which are marginal. Uh, we ourselves, as we kind of moved on, uh, and, but we expect these communities to be the carrier of these traditions, which we also, I think, our interaction with them and what we embedded them also kind of points to that relationship between us, the text, and their relationship with that text. Of course, they speak Sindhi, and in a, in a context where Kachi become, Kachi is a language, and in a context where they all learn Gujarati, you know, so there is, they're far removed from, but they're, they're tenuously kind of hang, hanging on to the coattails of these texts, and, and also, uh, what also we found fascinating, I mean, all that that could be said in the film is this relationship Bitai had with this text. He kind of throws it out and then some, he, it's kind of comes back to, I mean, he, his relationship with us of kind of design and kind of, very interesting kind of relationships that is kind of we found fascinating. For us, uh, what, what was very fascinating about Kutch is that it is a very different Gujarat from the Gujarat of Narendra Modi from the Gujarat of Gujarati, Asmita and hard borders and, and, and the, the kind of, uh, you know, fluidity that there is to, and, and the way in which these cultural forms move across different communities, regardless of their, uh, you know, religious beliefs, uh, you know, that was, I think that's something really wonderful. We spent some time actually in the local school in this community and, you know, they were just singing bhajans and, I mean, the, and only Gujarati, there's no, not even Sindhi, not even Kachi, nothing, you know, there's, I mean, so with the next generation, I mean, there is this anxiety that you see among people of, 
uh, who are you know have children that you know how do they how do they teach their children these languages how do they keep uh, you know those stories and uh, songs and all that alive because i think more than anything else education is doing its bit to kind of erase uh, these traditions beautiful film i was really enthralled by the images and the montages and uh, it's very right what you say it's a vast expanse and the one word that came to me was unbridled and uh, even though the uh, the songs are filled with loss and longing and uh, one thing that struck me is there is this late motif of encroachment so uh, when the truck driver says well i have to drive a truck to earn a living but i'd rather be a shepherd so there is almost this contrast between the the free unbridled pastoralist way of life which is very reminiscent of the landscape and the imposition from uh, for the lack, lack of a better term the modern world and you also touched upon how education was really interfering with uh, the their their essence of the way of life so what are the other sort of encroachment late motives that you saw one is of course the the occupation versus the free spirit and the other is education versus learning so what what else did you see that would be viewed as an encroachment late motive there's a lot of industrialization that is taking place there because of the density of population is very thin and along the coast of course there's a big scz that's uh, you know uh, coming there so uh, even the bunny area there there were their plans i mean uh, modi to kind of you know fence it create uh, i mean parcel it out and and there there are lots of, there is a lot of mobilization by various groups there to resist this kind of uh, you know taking over of their commons there is this kind of uh, uh, religious kind of angle to it which they have been using for instance uh, i think some time back uh, uh, some of these people sort of captured the cows of some of these muslim herders uh, saying that you know you should not so there have been those kinds of things also happening where vigilante groups have been uh, kind of encroaching in various ways on the on the rights of these communities to pass to their pastures the other thing which happened i think in the uh, earlier from the probably 70s 80s onwards was this uh, uh, whole uh, kind of aerial seeding of the land with this uh, uh, prosopis juliflora which they call gando bower it's a it's a it's a weed that has i mean those green kind of thorny trees you see which has totally destroyed those the ecosystem of those uh, grasslands and uh, you know the indian state did this under the uh, you know thing of that well you know to avoid desertification but the way in which it has uh, you know destroyed the local ecology it's even changed uh, you know earlier on uh, they had uh, more of goats and sheep and uh, but after this gandu bower came in they have changed to changed over to buffaloes because buffaloes are hardier and these these uh, plants actually result in mortality uh, of cattle and so on and so forth the smaller and so there are various ways in which uh, subtly as well as and of course the the hard border i think that's which he also talks about and the way in which families uh you know have been uh, divided i mean because it's also a, a kind of a border area movement is always seen as something that's suspicious that should not happen you know when we have hard borders we want people to be settled we want people we want to give them uids we want to uh, you know map them we want to uh, you know uh, discipline them control them so so there is certainly that project of the state that's going on thank you so much for the film i'm very intrigued in terms of whether it was a method choice or a narrative choice those vignettes in the middle where and you know what i'm going to ask you right the vignettes in the middle when they discuss you um looking at each other not at you but what you're doing why you're there should you record should you not record it's it's such a sort of almost side humorous partly ironic take on this question of power between the subject and the film you know and i just wanted to talk to you about how did those conversations come about we wait paid for you know those instances where that relationship you know surfaces so and we kind of seize upon those opportunities to kind of bring it up we, when we were shooting in we actually went to a, a space of uh, another community of jats called uh, danetra jats and they were uh, they, they also sing uh, shah abdul latif etais uh, but when we were shooting there we recorded the music but we were told you cannot shoot any woman 
in the in the uh, because it's a, a, a sports time, you can't do this. So we this, we, sh we recorded the music, but we were kind of uh, uh, fair enough. We kind of left it, uh, and they also had seen uh, a picture of somebody from their village is taken and on a tourist brochure, and which was put up in Buj. And some of the villagers, when they went there, saw these picture. So they were kind of, uh, I mean, they were upset about this whole thing. So then we kind of recorded the music and we went to this particular community called Fakirani Jats. And the first question that came again that whatever ladies, whether you can shoot them or not. Uh, so that's some the conversation, for example, where, between them is also kind of pointing to that particular uh, relationship that we. Uh, so we kind of whenever it happened, we kind of uh, we, we, sometimes we didn't know all that what is being said. Yeah, we didn't provoke. Actually, that conversation happened. We happened just told them so. you say whatever you mean. Talk to each other. We didn't actually tell them to yeah. talk about us or anything but she kind of probably this was this was the the, the first time we were uh, shooting with this family so probably this is what was her preoccupation and she i mean it's important to kind of foreground that relationship because it's not just documenting them by us but it's also who are these us who's kind of doing this and what is our right to be there and and uh, they're also there they're asserting their right to kind of you know talk about and uh, also the images being taken away. So it, it is happening, but at least we thought it should be. And we, we've done this with many of our other films too. And we kind of love those moments, opportunities that we come our way. I know the film kind of touched upon it. Um, and he kind of mentioned someone who wants to delve deeper. I think you just kind of scratch the surface and someone who wants to delve deeper will delve deeper. But a little bit, um, well, the connotations of those stories. Uh, one thing that I could get was um, that we've all come from one source and we'll go back to one source and the similarities across all life in, in one sense. That was one thing that I got. Maybe if you could share some more insights behind those stories. And the other part of my question was someone who lives a community that kind of lives with these kind of oral traditions. Um, if you saw ways in which it kind of seeped into their everyday life, um, and uh, because he, he did speak about, you know, the border and the fact that um, that in a way we're one across the border, and uh, that there are, um, you know, the hearts are so strong that if there is a will, that it will break all any kind of chain. But something is afoot, something else is afoot, or something is amiss that is stopping that from happening. Um, but I don't know, do they hold on very strongly to their sense of community or us against them? Does it seep into, in what ways does it seep into their everyday lives was something I'm, I was interested in. He has written about lovers who cannot to get, come together ever in the, most of his work. So it's kind of a metaphor for not being able to reach oneself or not being able to be there and here or not, not being able to uh, talk to God or whatever that one feels. You know, those, Antinomies is what that he's kind of putting question. And the way that they, uh, particularly Haji, was kind of bringing up to even talk about, even the, the everyday was very interesting. I, I think somewhere uh, in, in our kind of so-called modern, this thing, we, we are completely incapable of coping with things like death, loss, grief. We, we find it very difficult to, to accommodate them within the way we live. And, and somewhere I think, uh, you know, these kinds of ways of thinking and, and seeing are able to uh, come to terms with, with something like pain. Pain is not just something that one needs to erase, but how does one, one uh, see pain as a part of life? How does one see death as a part of life? I don't, I don't know if I'm putting it in a way that's understand, but, but there's something about, uh, you know, those words that you know touches you very deeply beyond what you can uh, articulate in, in words. You know, the, 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 the way the <coughs> most fundamental experience of human uh, thing is grief, and the way he talks about it, kind of touching, and and you also coming from somebody who is not, you know, educated, and the kind of wisdom that he brings to bear was kind of humbling for us, uh, working with somebody like. And he kept on telling us also as well that nobody has ever come to speak to me about. Sufism or people come here to ask about your 
cropping pattern and revenue generation. And you know, <laughs> Shabnam is the only one who spoke to him about. Yeah, he had that. he had very uh, you know warm and loving things to say about. Yeah, he said people you. come to the NGO and ask me about all kinds of stuff. You know, but they have nobody has ever asked me about you know my <laughs> own experience. And I'm very glad to. And what you're doing is quite right. You know, that was his. Thank you once again for coming. Thanks for the spirit of the Thank you.